Hi there, and welcome back to the Thomaltake Workshop. My name's Jeremy. My name's Nathaniel. And if you're watching today's video, you're probably interested in learning on how to install an all-in-one liquid CPU cooler into your PC. Nathaniel, what are we building with today? Today we've got the new Water 3.0 Ring Red Edition. This is the 140, that's a 280 millimeter. But this advice is pretty general across all of our modern liquid coolers, including the RGB version 240 that's sitting over there. There's also 360s and 120s. We're gonna be installing this into our View 31 workshop build that we've used in our last couple of videos. So go ahead and watch those if you haven't seen them. But for today, let's get these all-in-one coolers installed. Now, one quick thing to note before you go running out the door and buying your new all-in-one CPU cooler is to check your case manufacturer's specification page to ensure that the case that you're working with is going to support the length of the radiator that you want to put into it, as well as it has enough clearance as well for the components inside of your build. Now, if you're working in a small form factor environment, obviously a 120 or a 140 millimeter uh, radiator is going to be about as big as you can work with. If you're working in a bigger case like we are here today in the View 31, all of those sizes, including up to 240s through to 360 millimeter radiators, are gonna do the job just great. So with that said, let's have a look at what's inside of the box. Awesome, so we've gone through and we've taken out all of the components that we're going to need for today's build. We are using an Intel chipset, so these are all the Intel bits and pieces that we're going to need. You do have everything in the box as well if you've got an AMD chipset, so you're covered either way. Now let's run through very quickly what we need. We've got front plates here, we've got back plates as well for the back of the motherboard. We've got mounting clips to mount these front screws. We've got radiator screws which are going to attach the fans, the radiator, and the radiator to the case eventually. We've also got extension cords for the fans. Speaking of fans, delicious, wonderful LED 140 millimeter radiator fans which are high static pressure and are spectacular. And of course, the radiator itself, which is pre-filled, so you don't have to worry about leaks or evaporation. Lastly, of course, you do have your instruction booklet. Have a read of this before you do anything, because this will tell you what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and what you should not do under any circumstances. So without further ado, let's install. Now that we've seen everything that comes inside of the box, it's time to get down to business and start installing components. The first thing you want to gonna get installed into your system is gonna be the backplate. It sits on the rear of your motherboard. Now, this here is the Intel bracket specifically. We're running an 1151 socket. As you can see on each uh, corner of the bracket, it has a different switch type depending on what socket you're running. So check your instruction manual and it'll tell you exactly where these need to be positioned to install correctly onto your motherboard. In addition to this, we also include two double-sided pieces of tape and that we just fasten down on the sides here. That ensures it's all firmly tucked in once we have it installed to the rear of the motherboard. Now that we have each of the socket switches in their correct positioning, we can see that they align nice and neatly with the back of our motherboard. So let's go ahead and install this backplate. And as each screw there goes through their designated hole, once they're all in nice and firmly, just press down on where that sticky tape is and your bracket will be in nice and secure. So next up, we're assembling the front housing that's going to allow these screws to pass through the motherboard and attach to the back plate. We've got two sets of housing clips, some front ones and some back ones, and it's just a matter of assembling these on the bracket here so that those screws can pass through. Now to actually do that, you want to take the back piece, which is the one that's shaped like this. You take that and you pass it here on the back of the plate. You get one of the front pieces, line it up, and just push it through like that. Now, to show that it's lined up correctly, you just need to be able to see through to create a clear path for this screw to then pass through. So there's no obstructions, this just passes through and that clips in. Now we'll go ahead and assemble the rest of them and that'll be ready to go. So with all those installed, you're ready to move on to the next bit. You just need to make sure that these are correctly lined up with your back plate because much like the back plate, these pieces spin around for the different socket types. So for us, we just want to line them all up so that they are all pointing towards the center, which matches how we've set up the backplate. And then that's ready to install. Now that our front bracket for our CPU is all ready to go, it's time to get down to the coolest part of this video, mucking around with these fans and installing them onto our radiator. Now, as we are using our new ring fans, they look fantastic, they have gorgeous LEDs in them, and we want to show them off. So in this particular build, we're going to be mounting our radiator to the top of our case and placing these fans facing towards our hardware. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now our fans are installed onto our radiator, we're ready to go ahead and install this into our View 31 case. 
So now we're at the part of the video where everything starts to come together. So we've got the front plate that you've seen me put together the mounting clips before. That's going to mount onto our copper base plate and this little plastic ring here is going to hold it all in place so we can then put those screws in. Now one thing to remember is of course that there is a plastic cover on this. That's just to protect the thermal paste while it's in its box and it doesn't get smudged. But now we're installing it, we definitely want to take that off and make sure that that thermal paste, which is pre-applied here, is going to contact the CPU. Now to install this, it's just a matter of looking at the little teeth that are all the way around the outside of the ring, looking at the little grooves that are all the way on around the outside of the copper base plate here. We put this over so that it slides through the gaps. We give it a little turn so that the teeth line up. Little turn, little turn, there we go. And the little plastic ring here goes over the top. You give it a turn until it fits in and push everything down so it all snaps into place. There we go. With those in place, it's just a matter of taking these screws from before and clipping those through here so that they fit nice and snugly. And with all that out of the way, you are then set to install the radiator into the case and attach the CPU block to the CPU. So now we're installing the radiator. So Jeremy's going to get this into place and I'm going to be putting the screws in from the top. We just need to line all of these up with the rails, with these rails on the top of the case. And once everything's in place, it's just a matter of getting everything screwed in. For this sort of installation, of course, it is much better if you can find somebody else to help you and somebody who can hold everything in place because doing these on your own can be slightly nightmarish. And there you go, radiators installed, which means we are almost done. Now we just need to attach the CPU block and we also need to plug in the cables. Now, the last piece of the puzzle is as easy as it gets. It just involves installing our water block here onto our CPU. So with the four screw holes, we just line it up neatly there with our screws and we just start screwing these in simply in a diagonal pattern. And that just means that the pressure as it's been screwed in is nice and even across the entire face of the copper block. So there we go, top right, just screw it in a little bit. Recommend maybe about 50% in terms of tightness. And you just go through in a diagonal pattern there and everything will go in nice and neatly. There we go, that's looking pretty good now. And just like that, in a few seconds time, your new all-in-one liquid cooler will pretty much be ready to go. So with Jeremy screwing all that in, all that's left is to plug in the fans. These two have come through in the gap above the motherboard. We've just fed those through there. I'm going to take these and pass them through one of these grommets here. And we'll plug those into the motherboard and that is good to go. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you install a brand new all-in-one liquid CPU cooler into your PC. If you want to watch something else, head over here where we installed these wonderful case fans. Or if you're feeling powerful, click on this one where we installed this power supply. Keep an eye out for the next set of workshop videos as well coming soon in the future. And with that, my name's Jeremy. My name's Nathaniel. And we'll see you next time in the Thermaltake Workshop.